What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in this series, we're gonna learn how to use GeoScatter in order to scatter objects in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this series, we're gonna talk about how to use GeoScatter in order to scatter objects. Um, if you're here, you probably already know what it is, but GeoScatter is a tool that's specifically designed to help you scatter objects in Blender. This is gonna be an in-depth series teaching you how to use this. If you don't have GeoScatter and you want to get it, you can do that through my link, which is the cgessentials.com slash scatter. Note that that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I will receive a commission. But let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender and talk about how we can set up and start using this tool. So the first thing that you're gonna need to do is you're just gonna need to install it, right? So you're gonna wanna go to edit, preferences, and you wanna go up to install, and you wanna install the zip file that comes along with this when you download it. And so in this case, it's gonna look something like this, whatever version you have. You just wanna double click on that zip file in order to install it. And you can go ahead and click on this button right here in order to enable this. And so what this has done is this has enabled GeoScatter on your computer. And so what's really gonna be important in here is this tool has a plugin manager that allows you to manage a bunch of different things like the different packs um, that this allows you to scatter, other things like that. We can talk about that a little bit more in a second. But for now, let's go ahead and exit out of this and let's start by just tapping the N letter key on your keyboard. And so when you do that, that's gonna pop out a window over here. And if you have GeoScatter enabled, you should be able to click on this right here. And so let's start by doing a simple scatter. We're going to talk mostly about that in this video. And so the way that this works is this allows you to select an object and set it as an emitter. And so what an emitter is going to do, it's basically going to be the object that you scatter objects on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this eyedropper right here, and I'm going to select an object as an emitter. In this case, we want to select this plane, right? And so when we do this, notice how this pops up a little window over here with options. And so this is perfect because this is telling us that we have no presets installed. That means is this uses a scatter pack file um, in order to read the different ways that objects can be scattered. Now, when you download this or when you purchase it, it's actually going to come with a dot scat pack, dot scatter pack file that you can install. And so in this case, I'm going to click on the option for install preset.scatpack. And so you want to go find the presets.scatpack that this comes along with. Again, you just download it from the Blender market when you purchase this add-on. But if I double click on that, it's going to tell me installation was successful. We're going to click on OK. Well, now what this is going to do is this is going to show me different scattering options for different things in your scene. Right? So if I click in here, notice how there's different kinds of scattering functions, right? There's scattering functions that has things as like clumps. There's scattering fun functions that'll put things in here as rows. There's a bunch of different things. And these just kind of give you a visual of what, um, what those options are. Right, and there's a couple more down below. You can just mouse over these arrows in order to do this. And so let's say that I wanted to scatter something on this surface. Let's go ahead and let's pick one of these. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pick uh, maybe just this red one right here. And I'm just gonna click on this. And so this is going to scatter things based on a pattern. And so in this situation, let's jump over into shaded mode and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to set my colors in here as random just so you can see this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a shift A. I'm just gonna add a cube, just a simple cube. Might make it a little bit smaller like this. Apply my rotation and scale like this. But what I wanna do is remember that I have my plane selected in here and I want to scatter an object on the plane. Well, what I can do is I can just select this cube, click on the option for scatter objects. Well, when I do that, notice what that does is exactly what you would think that it would do. It would come in here and it would scatter a bunch of these objects on the surface. One thing to note about this that you might um, be noticing right here is these are not actually sitting on top of the surface, right? So the reason for that is this is scattering these objects based on the object origin right here. Well, the problem is the object origin is in the middle 
of this object. And so in this case, I don't like what this did. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to remove this system, right? So we can get rid of that scatter by going down into the systems list and removing it. And what I want to do is I want to within this object, I actually want to click into my options and I want to move the object axis down. So I'm going to go into a front view, do a G Z. I'm going to move the object axis down so that it's actually on the bottom of this object rather than um, in the middle of it like this. And then we can toggle that effect only origins back off. Well, now if we do the same thing, right, we're going to run this system. We've clicked on this object right here. Now notice how those are being placed with their origins on the ground right here, rather than placing them halfway through this surface. And so one of the cool things about this is you can come in here and adjust this scatter. So if I scroll down, right, and I look at this system, there's options down below that I can use to adjust this, right? So if I scroll down, you can see for example, that this is giving me kind of a random rotation. And so if I wanted to change the rotation in here, notice how I can adjust the seed of that rotation. And that is randomizing this system. You can also adjust the seed of the scale as well as the factor, right? So right now, right, notice how this randomization is uniform. And I can go ahead and I can set the probability of that scatter by dragging or the uh, of that randomization by clicking and dragging. You could also come in here and adjust things like the X, Y, and Z of this randomization using these functions right here. Now there, there's a ton of options in here for randomizing these objects. I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole right now. Just know that you can use this in order to scatter different objects. And so say that we didn't like this, what we could do instead is we're going to go ahead and get rid of this and I'm going to add another object, right? I'm going to do a shift A. I'm going to add a cylinder. So, and again, I want to take this and move it up and I want to make sure that my origin is on the bottom of the object, right? So I'm just going to do a G Z and we'll just kind of get it close for right now. Um, but then in this case, say that we wanted a different scatter pattern in here, we could click on this option right here in order to pick one of these other patterns. And so in this case, let's go with uh, maybe these rows right here. That'll be interesting. And notice how I can actually do a shift click and I can select multiple objects and then click on scatter objects. So when I do that, notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's scattering these objects with multiple different objects in here like this. And so it's pretty cool how you can come in here and you can scatter as many objects as you want in this system. Now, obviously my Bonnie model is um, not necessarily set up quite right. The direction is facing wrong and all of that. But, and so that is probably the simplest way that you can scatter objects using GeoScatter in Blender. Now, that's the preset scatter. There's a bunch of other functions in here, right? So the preset scatter is going to use kind of a pattern in order to place objects in here. There's also options in here to do things like a density scatter. So all that's going to do is that's going to allow you to set the density of objects on the surface. And you can just click on the option for scatter objects in order to scatter based on a density. And you can actually scroll down and you can adjust that density down below. So this is all going to be kind of live. And so what I want in this situation, and there's a lot of options in here, I want to click on the option for distribution right here. And again, notice how I have this system selected. Notice how I can adjust this, right? So I can adjust the density of objects that are created live inside of the scene. And so not only can you do a density scatter of a single object, say that we wanted some other objects in here, we could do another density scatter right here, right? And so notice what I've done in the situation is I've actually created two different scattering systems. So what that means is that means that these are two different systems that are in here that are going to have their own independent settings, right? So notice how I can come in here and I can adjust density scatter one, I can come in here and I can adjust density scatter two as well, just like this. And so one thing that's kind of cool about this is you can, within the system, click on the option for limit self collision. And so what that's going to do is that's going to try to avoid objects colliding with each other 
where possible. And notice how I can set this radial distance in here. That's gonna set the minimum distance between different objects in here. And notice how that is keeping these objects from really colliding with each other. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Um, so there's not a whole lot of overlap where if you uncheck the box, right, notice how um, all over the place these objects can kind of collide with each other. So that limit self collision can be very helpful. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get rid of these. Now notice how there's an option here for manual scatter. This one's actually really cool. What it does is it allows you to select objects in here. So I have these two objects selected. If I click on scatter objects, notice how that's gonna take me into a spray brush mode, which by the way, this is probably one of the better implementations of something like this that I've seen where it just automatically brings you in here. But this manual scatter is gonna allow me to come in here and just manually scatter objects by painting along the surface, which is really cool. And then when you're done, um, and you can do, there, there's instructions over here. You can do like a control left mouse button in order to erase some of these if you decide that you wanna do this. But um, when you're done, you can just click on the exit button right here. And again, notice how you've got this manual scatter system that's in here and you can adjust things about that. And so that manual scatter system is actually really cool. There's also an op, and notice how you can also toggle these off, right? So if you don't wanna show them in your render or your display, you can just toggle them off rather than deleting them. Um, but then there's also options in here for quick scatter, right? So if I click on quick scatter, that's just gonna pop up some little windows right here and you can select any of these in order to quickly do a scatter on your surface. So I'm just going to this right here Notice how this is actually going to let me draw on the surface like this. So again, really easy to use, actually a really cool function that's in here. And um, I'm not sure on that one, we can get into this more in a future video, um, but for right now, I think that we're just done with this one. We're gonna click on enter or we're gonna hit enter to confirm, um, but you can come in here and you can adjust things like the density and the self collision in here as well. So, and again, on that self collision, you'd want the radial distance to get a little bit bigger, but the um, quick scatter is a super cool function. All right, and then finally, we've got the biome scatter function, which um, we'll talk more about in a future video because this one, uh, getting it all set up can be a little bit complex, not too bad. But um, basically the way that this one works is you can click on your open biomes function right here. And notice how I have multiple different biomes that are in here, right? I've got assets for junk and trash, for clouds, for vegetation. You can basically bring in biomes from other asset creators and use them in Blender. But the way that this works is these are pre-set up collections of different vegetation and other things like that. So say for example, that I wanted to add, um, we'll go with these bushes right here. I'm gonna click on bushes right here to bring these in, but notice what this is gonna do is this is going to populate all of these objects in the scene. Now, obviously this is very heavy and GeoScatter does some things to protect your performance, which we can talk about in the future as well. But basically the way this works is notice how this brought all these objects in here um, and it scattered them based on um, kind of an automatic scattering function that's in here. So I'm gonna let the shaders compile, which will take just a second. Um, but this basically allows you to create a very detailed scatter on your surfaces in here without you having to come in here and like come up with it all yourself, right? So notice how this one, for example, has different layers of things like dead grass and dead leaves, which you can toggle on and off, but it uses all of these in order to create a really realistic scatter with assets that you already own. So in this series, I wanna get really in depth on the things you can do with scatter because it's just such a huge add on. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.